Let's make a simple leaderboard in Unity. I use this method in my crazy driver game. First, make a canvas. Right click UI canvas. Canvas scaler will be set to scale with screen size. I put 1920 by 1080 so it can adapt to different screen sizes. Then let's create an empty child and call that names. Then right click and add a text mesh pro text. Import the TM pro essentials. If you double click or press shift F, you can zoom in on it. I'm going to call this name. Duplicate that as many times as you want. So this is the amount of names that will be displayed on the leaderboard. Then under the names, let's add a vertical layout group, which puts the child game objects evenly spaced in a vertical direction, which you can change the settings here, such as the padding and the spacing. Now click on the names and duplicate that control D press F2 to rename that to scores. And then let's move that next to the names. I'm going to select all of the children game objects with shift and click and rename them to score. Now you can adjust them on your screen wherever you want with the rec transform. If I want them on the right side, I can press shift and alt and click and position them wherever I want. Then let's right click on the canvas and make a UI input field. I'm going to increase the scale. This will be where the user enters their name. And I'm going to set the position of this to the left with shift and alt, which also sets the pivot of the UI object. Also going to right click and create a UI button which I'm going to click the drop down and replace the button text with a little arrow. And in the button, I'm going to reduce the width and then increase the scale. This will act as the submit button when the user wants to submit their name to the leaderboard. Additionally, you can add a UI text with the current score of the player so they know before they submit, increase the width and adjust the positioning. Once that's done, let's create a new script. I'm going to create a scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script and call it leaderboard going to erase that. We need a reference to our text so we can put using TM Pro, which is the text mesh pro namespace. We can do a serialized field, private list of text mesh pro UGUI, which is our text. We can call that names. Then let's copy that and call this one scores. Now let's make a leaderboard. Let's make a function called public void get leaderboard. And we're going to be using this tool from Dan QZQ on itch.io where you can scroll down, right click, the download the unity package of this tool and you can donate if you'd like. I'm just going to click no thanks. Take me to the downloads, then download that will download a unity package, which you can drag and drop into your unity scene and click import to import all of these scripts. Back in the creator, we can click run leaderboard creator to create our leaderboard. You see, I have a leaderboard for my game, create a new leaderboard and we can call this test or whatever you'd like. For now, you can copy the public key. In Unity, make a variable for the public key. Private string public leaderboard key equals and paste from your keyboard to set it to our value. Now we can use the using dan.main namespace, which is the package we imported, and we can put leaderboard creator dot get leaderboard, pass in our public key, comma, and this will be our callback function that is called when our request for getting the leaderboard is completed. Since we do have to query the internet, this does take some time to complete and the value isn't returned immediately. So we have to wait for that value to be returned. And in this case, we can make a callback function right inside of this function, put parentheses and take in a parameter, which you can name whatever you want. And we'll use this arrow notation to define a function within a function and make sure the variable name matches for your public key. So get leaderboard will return a value, which we will be able to access via this message parameter. And then we can do some processing within this function. So here we can set our names and scores of our text mesh pro list to the ones on the leaderboard. So we can do a simple for loop for int i equals zero. I is less than names dot count, which is the amount of names in this list, semicolon plus plus i or i plus plus. And so now we will iterate over each of these names and replace it with our values from the leaderboard that we fetched. So now we can do names at i dot text. So we'll assign the text equal to message at I dot username. And you can see we can copy that. And instead of the names, we can put scores. And instead of username, we could put score here. However, this is an integer. So we have to convert it to a string by putting dot to string. Now let's make a function for uploading to the leaderboard. We can do public void set leaderboard entry. And we can take in a username string username and the score in score. Now we can use the leaderboard creator, leaderboard creator dot upload new entry, 
pass in our public key, public leaderboard key, our name, username, and the score. Then we can add another comma, and this will be our callback function that is called when this function is complete. So let's put in a parameter called message, which we will actually be using. So you could put an underscore if you'd like. Then once we've added our username to the leaderboard, we want to update our leaderboard so the user can see the changes. And for that, we can just call our get leaderboard function again. As an aside, if you want to limit the amount of characters that a person's username can be, you can either do the processing here by doing something like username.substring 0 to 4, which returns a string of length 4, or you can do it directly on the input. So the player cannot input more than 4 characters in the input field. Additionally, I like to add a little if statement here and check if this username is a bad word. So I have an array of bad words, which I will not show on the video. But here we check if our name is included in the bad words array with this function index of. If it is, it will return an index greater than negative one. If not, it will return negative one. So if it isn't negative one, then we don't want to add this name to the leaderboard because it is a bad word. Okay, back in Unity, let's create a new game object and call that leaderboard manager. And let's attach our script leaderboard. Now let's assign our text mesh pro game objects to our lists. So I'm going to go in the inspector on the top right, click this little lock icon. So once we click another game object, it won't change our view of the inspector. Click on the first name, shift, click on the last name and drag that into the names list and do the same with the scores. Click on the first one, shift, click on the last one and drag that into our scores. You can unlock the inspector now. We actually need a reference to our current text from the input field and our score. And you can do that in the leaderboard script. However, just to keep things clean, I'll just create a new script and call this score manager. We can erase this starting code here and put using TM pro and erase these two using statements that we won't be using. Along within the leaderboard, we can erase the using system.collections. Here we can have a reference to our score which in your case, it might differ how you pass in the score to the leaderboard because you'll probably have that score stored in a script that relates to the gameplay. In this case, this is an example. So I'm just putting it in its own little script. So I'm going to put private text mesh pro UGUI, call this input score. And then you'll see we have an input field here, which is a text mesh pro input field. So we can do serialized field private, and then it's called TNP underscored input field. We can call that input name. I can do a public void submit score. And now we need to call our leaderboard and pass in our input score and name. So we can get a reference to our leaderboard component, or we can send an event, or we can make this static. In my case, I'm just going to send an event using Unity Engine dot events. We can send a public Unity event and pass in a string and an integer and call this submit score event. And then here we can do submit score event dot invoke. Then we can pass in our input name dot text and our input score dot text. And we are taking in an integer here. So in this case, I'm just going to put int dot parse, which turns a string into an integer. And so essentially what we're doing here is that we're getting a reference to our input score, our input name. Then once we click the button to submit, we will shoot out an event that the leaderboard will be listening to and that event will contain a string and an integer, which is what the leaderboard accepts as its parameters. And so that way we can communicate with the leaderboard without having a direct reference to the leaderboard. And this is just a good coding standard overall, where you want to try to reduce the amount of direct dependencies you have between your components to avoid hassles later on, such as null references, and also to assist in debugging. Now in the button, I'm just going to add in the score manager. And let's drag and drop our input field into the input name and then our text, which is our score into the input score. Then in our button in the on click method, we can drag our score manager and then call our score manager submit score, which that will call this function, the submit score function, which will then fire an event. So we can add a new event, which communicates with our leaderboard manager that we have here. And then we can call our leaderboard set leaderboard entry. And it's important to make sure it's in the dynamic section because we are dynamically passing in the name and the score. Now I'm just going to rename this text to score and under current score, I'm going to place an example score. 
so we can see how it works. Under the main camera, I'm also going to set the clear flags to solid color and black just so we can see our canvas a little better when we play the game. All right, if we go to the game tab and press play now, there are no current scores. So let's try adding a name and pressing the submit button. As you can see, there is an error. If we click on the error message, it's because there's not enough entries in the leaderboard to populate our list. So we can do an if statement in the for loop. However, to reduce the amount of times that we check, we can just do a simple calculation up here and put int loop length equals. Now we can see which one is bigger. So message dot length. If the length of our current leaderboard is less than the amount of entries that we have, so names dot count. And this is a way of doing a short if else statement. Then we choose the message dot length else we choose the names dot count. So this is if this condition is true, then this value will be set else this value will be set and we can replace names dot count with our loop length. So upon pressing play, let's enter our name and you'll see that now it is updated in the leaderboard. And now if we stop pressing play and go back to the leaderboard script under the start function that we can create, we can just put a get leaderboard call here. And once the game is started on the next run, now our leaderboard will be populated with the previous score that we submitted. So if we press play, you'll see that our leaderboard is now populated and there is a console.log here. Let's try inputting a different score with a different name and you'll see that that is updated. And when we press play again, it is updated as well. And this is a completely free solution for an online leaderboard works on WebGL and Android and on a normal build. And I just want to mention that if you go back to your itch.io, you can now see your leaderboard. And if you click manage, you can see all of the users and edit them or delete them from the leaderboard. And you can also manually upload a new entry via this dashboard. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. And thank you to all my patrons for their support. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.